All praises, all praises, all praises to the heavenly, holy, almighty creator of infinity, eternity, the universe, the stars, the earth, the mountains, the oceans, the valleys, the seas, the clouds, all creeping things, humanity, and all there is. This is revelations.unveiled.detroit. Happy Holy Sabbath, family. We are convening and converging, congregating and convocating as we are stepping up to the threshold of transition to bear forth our cranial universes and expose our souls to the heavenly, holy, almighty heat and fire of the word of the Lord of all imagination, all praises. And as we get ready for this cosmic communication and holy frequency to the nation, I say my blessings of peace to the 12 tribes scattered abroad, wherever you may sojourn. My continuous prayer for your care and safety, as well as the brothers and sisters of the world, whom I call the pending Israelites, those who refer to themselves as the melanated and the Moors, the original man and children of God, the sovereigns and sojourners, the copper color, the color and people of color, the aboriginals and indigenous, the natives, Negroes and niggas, the Afro African Americans and blacks, the descendants of slaves and those conquered and colonized. Oh yes, and we are blessed as we give the holy reverence and appreciation to the power for another seven days of the gift of breath and life. And we are here family in our area of the revelations that unveiled Dr. Detroit Dan, the place of peace, comfort, and safety, where we are here together in love and harmony to receive the wisdom of the words of eternity. And yes, we are celebrating our 39th week of the Sabbath Wisdom Series. 39 weeks of the Sabbath Wisdom Series where we have gathered together in our consensual assembly of coordinated care, concern, and compassion for the brothers and the sisters of the holy nation. All praises and family. We have expanded and expounded and extended our intellect, our spiritual development in the wisdoms of the word of the holy power as disseminated to the holy prophets and kings of the nation. All praises. And we have started with holy brother King Solomon himself as we have examined the Song of Solomon, Ecclesiastes, Proverbs, the wisdom of Solomon. We have consumed the history and the mystery of the hidden holy nation as we have followed the path of the holy lineages. We have also witness the escapades and the consequences and circumstances of choice by the kings and the prophets. We have seen the wisest king be cursed due to his idolatry in worshiping the strange gods of his many wives of the other nations. We have seen the splitting of the holy nation into two kingdoms, the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah. We have followed along through the line of the kings of Israel as well as the kings of Judah. We are filling in the gaps and the holes of our common kernel curriculum in this continent of captivity as we bumble along in Babylon. And so we shall continue with our growth in the understanding and the discerning of the mystery of the history of the holy nation 
as we began at the Revelations that unveiled Dr. Trick channel standards in the book of Malachi, chapter 3, verse 6. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. Followed by our second heavenly eternal standard in the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 8, in reference to the holy anointed Messiah, the anointed, the wonderful, the Savior, the King of Israel, whom the world refers to as Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. And as we strap on our sandals of salvation, as we get ready to embark on the expressway of excellence, we shall pass by and give respect to the holy brother, prophet Isaiah, as we visit his scroll in the 28th chapter, verses 9 through 11. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breasts. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. Oh yes, family. And as we have gathered and we have claimed our soft place in this space, we shall grab the hands of the eternal beings that are with us as we become still, as we become quiet, as we are ready to examine and consume the history of the mystery of the hidden nation. And in last week's chapter, we were a witness to the assembly of the kings of Israel and the king of Judah as they were preparing for battle with the king of Syria and the brother prophet Micaiah gave forth his word from the Lord. And as a result, King Ahab received mortal injury and died in battle and his son Ahijah came in in his stead to continue the leadership amongst the northern kingdom of Israel. And so we finished up the last chapter in the book of the first Kings. And now we shall immerse ourselves in the wonder of wisdom of the book of second Kings chapter one. Then Moab rebelled against Israel after the death of Ahab and Ahijah fell down through a lattice in his upper chamber that was in Samaria and was sick. He sent messengers and said unto them, go inquire of Beelzebub, the God of Ekron, whether I shall recover of this disease. But the angel of the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite, arise, go up to meet the messengers of the king of Samaria and say unto them, is it not because there is not a God in Israel that you go to inquire of Beelzebub? the God of Ekron? Now, therefore, thus saith the Lord, you shall not come down from that bed on which you, de you are gone up, but shall surely die. And Elijah departed. And when the messengers turned back unto him, he said unto them, why are you now turned back? And they said unto him, there came a man up to meet us and said unto us, go turn again unto the king that sent you and say unto him, thus saith the Lord, is it not because there is not a God in Israel that you send us to inquire of Beelzebub, the God of Ekron? Therefore, you shall not come down from that bed on which you are gone up, but shall surely die. And he said unto them, what manner of a man was he which came up to meet you and told you these words? And they answered him, he was an hairy man and girt with a girdle of leather about his loins. 
And he said, it is Elijah the Tishbite. Then the king sent unto him a captain of 50 with his 50. And he went up to him and behold, he sat on the top of a hill and he spoke unto him, you man of God, the king has said, come down. And Elijah answered and said to the captain of 50, if I be a man of God, then let fire come down from heaven and consume you and your 50. And there came down fire from heaven and consumed him and his 50. Again, also he went up unto another captain of 50 with his 50. And he answered and said unto him, O man of God, thus have the king said, come down quickly. And Elijah answered and said unto him, if I be a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume you and your 50. And the fire of God came down from heaven and consumed him and his 50. And he sent again a captain of the third 50 with his 50. And the third captain of the 50 went up and came and fell on his knees before Elijah and besought him and said unto him, O man of God, I pray you, let my life and the life of these 50 your servants be precious in your sight. Behold, there came fire down from heaven and burnt up the two captains of the former 50s with their 50s. Therefore, let my life be precious in your sight. Verse 15, and the angel of the Lord said unto Elijah, go down with him, be not afraid of him. And he arose, went down with him unto the king. And he said unto him, thus saith the Lord, for as much as you have sent messengers to inquire of Beelzebub, the God of Ekron, is it not because there is no God in Israel to inquire of his word? Therefore, you shall not come down off that bed on which you have gone up, but shall surely die. So he died according to the word of the Lord, which Elijah had spoken. And Jehoram reigned in his stead in the second year of Jehoram, the son of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, because he had no son. Now the, re now the rest of the acts of Ahijah, which he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Israel? All oh, praises, family. And so we saw there that uh, brother Ahijah caught a little trouble from the Almighty. And brother Ahijah, the king of the northern tribes he sent forth messengers to inquire of an idol god be elzebub of the people of the land of ekron and as a result of that wicked idolatry the curse of death was poured out upon him by the word of the lord through the prophet elijah all praises and so family we are now getting into the inner depths of the understanding of the performance of the leaders of the holy nation as we continue to gather and grasp at those points of history that will satisfy the mystery for the education and edification of this holy nation all praises and as we have expanded our steps upon this expressway as we have donned the armor of salvation we are now steadying our hips and squaring our shoulders we dip our head as we head into the battle through the hallway of hell through the avarice alienation and affliction as we dodge these daggers and darts to our arrogance pride and ego and dignity and now we shall embark we shall perform our mystical magical art as we are now ready to absorb the jabs of these javelins and jabs, these pings, pangs, and punctures to this wonderful 
armor that we have. We are ready now to absorb the penetration from the pineal to the pituitary as we continue to embark upon the expressway of excellence for the extension and the expounding and the escalation and elevation of the holy nation as we are now in the book of Ecclesiasticus 31 of the apocryphal texts. Watching for riches consumes the flesh and the care thereof drives away sleep. Watching care will not let a man slumber as a sore disease breaks sleep. The rich have great labor in gathering riches together and when he rests, he is filled with his delicates. The poor labors in his poor estate and when he leaves off, he still is needy. He that loves gold shall not be justified, and he that follows corruption shall have enough thereof. Gold has been the ruin of many, and their destruction was present. It is a stumbling block unto them that sacrifice unto it, and every fool shall be taken therewith. Blessed is the rich that is found without blemish and has not gone after gold. Who is he? And we will call him blessed for wonderful things has he done among his people. Who has been tried thereby and found perfect? Then let him glory. Who might offend and who has not offended or done evil? and has not done it. His goods shall be established and the congregation shall declare his alms. If you sit at a bountiful table, be not greedy upon it and say not, there is much meat on it. Remember that a wicked eye is an evil thing and what is created more wicked than an eye Therefore, it weeps upon every occasion. Stretch not your hand whithersoever it looks and thrust it not with him into the dish. Judge not your neighbor by yourself and be discreet in every point. Eat as it becomes a man, those things which are set before you and devour note, lest you be hated leave off first for manner's sake and be not unsatiable lest you offend when you when you sit among many reach not your hand out first at all a very little is sufficient for a man well nurtured and he fetches not his wind short upon his bed sound sleep comes of moderate eating he rises early and his wits are with him, but the pain of watching and choler and pangs of the belly are with an unsatiable man. Verse 21. And if you have been forced to eat, arise, go forth, vomit, and you shall have rest. My son, hear me and despise me not. And at the last you shall find as I told you, and all your works be quick, so shall there be no sickness to come upon you. Whoso is liberal with his meat, men shall speak well of him, and the report of his good housekeeping will be believed. But against him that is a niggard of his meat, the whole city shall murmur, and his testimony of his niggardness shall not be doubted of. Show not your valiantness in wine, for wine has destroyed many. The furnace proves the edge by dipping, so does wine the hearts of the proud by drunkness. Wine is as good as life to a man. If it be drunk moderately, 
What life is then to a man that is without wine? For it was made to make men glad. Wine measurably drunk and in season brings gladness of heart and cheerfulness of mind. But wine drunken with excess makes bitterness of the mind with brawling and quarreling. Drunkenness increases the rage of a fool till he offends. It diminishes strength and makes wounds. Verse 31, rebuke not your neighbor at the wine and despise him not in his mirth. Give him no despiteful words and press not upon him with urging him to drink. All praises. And that was 31 precepts of perfection driven directly into the cranial cortex to release the sore of the ooze of the salvation of the soul. All praises. And so we see that when consumed with the gathering of riches, one scars and curses himself with the vanities of those delicacies. And yet the man who is impoverished and works find the satisfaction in his soul for that little which he has secured and is provided through his work. And we see how we are to gather amongst the spirits of drink, the spirit of wine. It is to be enjoyed with gladness and mirth, but we are to beware of drunkenness and excess because it brings forth wrath and violence and brawling and quarreling and wounds. All praises. And we give honor to the excellence of Ecclesiasticus and the wisdoms of Sirach. And so now, family, as we are now wide open, as we have been excavated with the excellence of the precepts and perfection of the wisdoms and wonderments of eternity, we are now ready for the harmony of eternity, the harmonies of infinity, as we will now enjoy the song from the holy brother king prophet David, the apple of the Lord's eye, as we are now absorbing the sage and the salve of the wonderful salvations in the lyrics of learning, in the petitions of prayer, in the book of Psalms, chapter 30, verse 1. A psalm and song at the dedication of the house of David. I will extol thee, O Lord, for you have lifted me up and have not made my foes to rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried unto thee and you have healed me. O Lord, you have brought up my soul from the grave. You have kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. Sing unto the Lord, O you saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness, for his anger endures but a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And in my prosperity, I said, I shall never be moved. Verse seven, Lord, by your favor, have you made my mountain to stand strong? You did not hide your face and I was troubled. I cried to thee, O Lord, and unto the Lord I made supplication. 
What profit is there in my blood when I go down to the pit? Shall the dust praise you? Shall it declare your truth? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. Lord, be you my helper. You have turned for me my mourning into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness. Verse 12. To the end that my glory may sing praise to you and not to be silent. O Lord, my God, I will give thanks unto you for ever. Alleluia. And all praises, so be it. Happy Holy Sabbath family. We are at honor and peace and reverence in education and edification as a nation. On the Holy Sabbath, the day designated by the Holy Power himself as a day of rest as he has established all of creation. And it is a mark and a testimony to the children of Israel as a covenant to the holy power of infinity. All praises and family. We continue to expound and grow and know and show this little light of ours as we continue to walk and bear forth as a commitment, as a sacrament for our soul salvation as we continue to refine and define our walks on the path of righteousness given to us as an example by the holy anointed Crete, the holy anointed Messiah, the wonderful, the redeemer, the savior, the king of Israel, whom the world refers to as Jesus Christ, who is the word of the holy power of creation made flesh. The same word written on stone by the holy power's own finger and given to brother prophet Moses as a covenant to present to the true church, to the nation, to the 12 tribes of Israel as a constitution to observe and to do so that we may be deemed worthy to enter into the 12 gates of the kingdom of heaven on earth. Let it be done. So be it. And family, as we continue to grow in the word, as we continue to grow in the spirit, as we continue to grow in the divine wisdom, we shall continue to be that example amongst the brothers and sisters of the world so that we may continue to return to the holy covenant as the children of Israel. In my continuous petitions and prayer for your care and safety, for your joy and harmony, for your peace of mind as we continue to overcome and persevere and endure so that we may be right righteous and ready for the return of the holy king for the millennial reign in the millennial kingdom and family enjoy the holy sabbath rest well be good do good and as always I love you, I love you, I love you. Until we are together again, this is revelations.unveiled.detroit. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verses 6 through 9. For we are a holy people unto the Lord our God. 
The Lord, our God, has chosen us to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. The Lord did not set his love upon us, nor choose us because we were more in number than any people, for we were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved us and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn to our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, has the Lord brought us out with a mighty hand and redeemed us out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Verse nine, know therefore that the Lord, our God, he is God, the faithful God, which keeps covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. The book of Joel, chapter two, verse 27. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else and my people shall never be ashamed. And to the scattered tribes, here is your promise of comfort. Book of John, chapter three, verses 14 through 17, into Isaiah, chapter 45, verse 17. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Verse 17, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Isaiah 45, 17. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. You shall not be ashamed nor confounded, world without end. <laughs>